In this video, I'm gonna show you how to never get ghosted again by simply doing this one thing that I share with you that changes everything. Now, first off, if you've been ghosted, which simply means that there was someone that was investing energy into you, maybe you were going on dates with them, or maybe you haven't even gone out on a date yet, but you were communicating with them, and then all of a sudden, like that communication just stops. They're not reaching out to you anymore, they're not making plans to hang out anymore, and it leaves you wondering, what is wrong, what did I do, what the hell is going on? Now, first off, understand that with ghosting, uh, let me also first say that I have been somebody in the past, I speak from experience with this, there's a woman I've dated in the past where I've ghosted. And I'll tell you my perspective of it, I've been through a transformation over the last couple of years of my own masculinity, and I'll share with you why I used to do it and why I no longer do it, all right? And I, do it, I don't do it anymore as well because I'm in a relationship. But in general, the reason I was somebody that was ghosting back in the day is because I had my own vulnerability blocks. Which means, rather than telling somebody that I'm either too busy or not interested, I would instead not communicate. And I had it happen a few times where somebody, uh, I would either go out with somebody and then something would happen to where then we didn't, uh, the communication stopped. And sometimes it was because I was busy. Sometimes it was because I just wasn't interested. And sometimes, sometimes it was just, just because, it just happened. And it wasn't something that was necessarily at all this person's fault. So also understand with this, if somebody goes to you, it may not be your fault at all. It could be that this person is busy, first off. It could be that they are busy. That is a, uh, something that could be true. And also, especially if somebody is, is constantly texting somebody else, uh, it may be the person's busy and they don't have time to respond. Also. Sometimes texting too much can have a negative impact if it's texting from a place of wanting someone else's approval or validation. So that could also be somewhat of the case. Sometimes we develop a story in our mind where this person hasn't reached back in two hours, they ghosted me. Maybe give it a little bit longer than two hours. Now on the other side of it though, being ghosted might actually be a very good thing. The reason being, now this isn't something that you necessarily want, but understand that what ghosting is, is it's a communication issue. It's a communication, it's a lack of communication, a lack of vulnerability. So what has happened is somebody stopped talking, maybe they are not interested anymore, and then what happens is maybe they're, you were wanting a relationship, you were wanting to go deeper, but they weren't ready to meet you there. Doesn't mean it's your fault or something wrong with you, you're not worthy. It simply means that maybe they don't have the emotional capacity, their emotional availability to go deep with you right now. And maybe they have other things they're focused on. So this is something to realize that it could be a very good thing. Now another thing you could do, if you do get ghosted, one thing you could do is you could literally text them and see, what is, is everything okay? The energy seemed to shift between us, is everything okay? And you could even say like, am I being ghosted, LOL? And as, as weird as that may be to text, just don't do it after two hours. <laughs> Imagine it's only been two hours, like am I being ghosted? It's okay, You're maybe you jump into conclusions. But if you reach out to somebody that you were talking to that you wanted to stay connected to and then a day or two later, they haven't responded and you text them and then a day or two after that they don't text you, then you can send a text that says like, hey, am I being ghosted, LOL? <laughs> uh, and by doing so, you're being very direct. You're leading with being vulnerable. Even though it could be, he's like, yes, actually, I'm not interested. And guess what? You've saved yourself time. The key to this is what is called clear communication. And that's why it's also good from the very beginning to clearly communicate your intentions with somebody else. Where you clearly communicate, oh, I'm attracted to you. I'd like to go out again with you. Or something like that. And then that sets the bar. That sets the clear communication where they, then they can be clear with you. Sometimes people end up in this no man's land where it's like kind of a gray zone. It's like, are we dating? Are we not dating? This is, sometimes the guy may not even know if you really like him or not. So that's why it's really powerful to communicate clear, with clear communication. Now for me, the reason I used to do that to why I would never do that now if I were single, I'm in a relationship, but it would be because now I am not afraid of being honest, of being vulnerable. 
Before I was, I was afraid of rejecting somebody else or I was afraid of being honest because I was afraid that if I was honest, I would be the bad person, I'd be the bad guy and that wasn't something that I wanted. And what I would then do instead is I would just completely avoid communication. Then I would also sometimes just say, oh, I'm very busy. And sometimes I would be busy, but um, it didn't happen that much in the past. Now that I think about it, but it did happen a few times. I do remember ghosting someone and then they posted on like social media indirectly about me. Like, um, this is not someone any of you guys know, by the way. <laughs> Uh, this is somebody from like years ago, but I remember reading social media like this person, like somebody ghosted me, he's a dick, blah, 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 blah. And I remember reading it and being like, wow, like I, I didn't really even know I was doing that. I was like, yeah, I guess. And I, and I guess I could have just been more honest from the beginning. This is like what, 2017? It was a long time ago <laughs> that this happened. However, it was a lack of vulnerability on my part that I could have just been more honest and being more honest may have also been easy for that person. But now I see that it's very powerful to have clear communication, to clearly communicate what my desires are, my intentions are. And if I'm not interested in someone, it would be to be honest there as well. So in general, let's also take this a step deeper when it comes to being ghosted. Let's realize that one of the biggest wounds that almost everybody has at a certain level is an abandonment wound is when we were kids, when we were younger, mom or dad or a caretaker either physically or emotionally left. Maybe they weren't there when you were going through something. Maybe they actually physically left. Maybe they were emotionally not present. Whatever it was, something happened and then we decided, we started to believe there's something wrong with me, which is the energy of shame. I'm broken, something wrong with me. And then also a story that people leave me. People may invest energy and then take away that energy. And there's a story there. And then what happens in order to compensate for all of these things, what we may do is become a people pleaser. May overly give or be very nice or try to uh, not put people in to feel tension. So we might sugarcoat things or ghost instead of having to go into the tension to actually say what we're really thinking or feeling. So this is about becoming aware of that energy and realizing that this may be a replaying of energy that came from childhood. So take it as a blessing that now you can become aware of the autopilot story that is there because our stories, our beliefs about reality are constantly being reflected back to us. So if we believe that people leave us, then guess what? Self-fulfilling prophecy, the universe reflects that back. We attract people into our lives that do invest a little bit of energy and then remove it. And that's why one of the best things we can actually do is become aware of what these beliefs are, but aware of what these patterns are. Because in a weird twisted way, we may also be attracted to people that ghost us because it reminds us of childhood. It reminds us of being ghosted as a kid, of abandoned as a kid. And there's something that feels f familiar and safe about it to chase that, to follow that, to be attracted to that. And the 90% of all transformation, by the way, is simply awareness. Becoming aware of these beliefs, aware of these stories. I've realized in the past that I had this energy to where I would choose people that wouldn't choose me because I was familiar with that energy when I was a kid and I honestly wasn't choosing myself. Also ask yourself this question. Have I ever ghosted myself? Do you ever ghost yourself? Have you ever abandoned yourself? Maybe in the past you left your, you, you became not present. You started and stopped doing what actually fills up your own cup. And the, the real ghosting is not actually that the other person ghosted you, is that they reflected something that you believe to be true about yourself and you may be emotionally or physically ghosting yourself, not being present, and then having the reflection of that. And I'll tell you, one of the things that guarantees you won't get ghosted is you change your belief that says that people leave you change your belief that says I'm not worthy. You change your belief and let go of believing I'm broken. There's something wrong with me. And even if you do get ghosted, guess what? It happens less and less. The more you become aware of it and you don't choose people that would ghost you. You start being very clear from the front, from the beginning of what your intentions are. You have clear communication. Also a little side note. Sometimes I think what happens too, 
people start texting each other, especially with like dating apps and stuff. And then they text each other for like six freaking weeks before meeting up. And then guess what happens? There's all this built up anticipation and expectation. And then what happens? They never actually meet up in person. They never actually um, do it because there's such high expectations and there's anxiety that comes with that. So one of the things that I would highly recommend you become aware of with this is the energy you're putting out and just how you're showing up in the relationship. Now, generally texting, by the way, texting and getting to know someone, you should do a little bit on the phone, but mainly in person. That's one of the, I think like something that happens that really messes up and increases the chances of someone being ghosted is having like novels and novels and novels of texting and communication and like dating apps and stuff rather than using texting or dating apps to meet up in person to get to know someone like the good old days. That's the best way you can connect is with energy where you're in someone else's field and you're talking to them, you're out doing some uh, maybe you're out, I don't know, what would you do? Go to go out to eat, go bowling, go to yoga, do whatever you do. But the key to this is becoming aware of what is the mechanism of what texting and communication is there. It's not to get to know somebody and to date them through the digital world like that. It's to get them and to see if you have something in common and then to meet them in person and then to go from there because you'll make much deeper connections and it, you also set the frame for interactions like that. Because a lot of times ghosting obviously is through text message. Ghosting is through the digital world. But one of the things I'd really encourage you to look at is how are you ghosting yourself? How are you abandoning yourself? Are you choosing people that aren't choosing you because you aren't choosing yourself? Are you choosing emotionally unavailable people because maybe you aren't being emotionally available to yourself or allowing emotional availability in? And one of the ways you let it in is you lead with emotional vulnerability. You lead with clear communication. And as you're being clearly, clearly communicated how you feel and where you are, you will attract people that are also at that same level. And if they do ghost you or leave, it's a good thing because you're saving yourself time. You don't want to force yourself into a relationship with somebody that is emotionally unavailable or not interested. So realize it's a good thing. And also when it comes to rejection, you can only be rejected if you agree that that is rejection. Like if you develop a story and say, oh my God, this person rejected me. It means I'm not worthy. I feel abandoned like I did when in childhood and all this stuff. That's a story. Realize that you can either, you can reframe that rejection and say, there I am again, being vulnerable and clearly communicating because that's actually what I want to attract in by leading with that energy. That person didn't want that. They didn't say no to you. They said no to emotional vul vulnerability or a clear communication. So realize that you don't have to internalize the rejection it had nothing to do with you. The rejection was to the circumstance to that person's own emotional availability. And when you realize that it changes absolutely everything with that energy. Now, one of the things that will change your life more than anything is healing and nurturing your own inner child. That's where you can let go of the abandonment wound. That's where you can start feeling more magnetic. That's where you won't care about ghosting because it won't be something you internalize. So if you haven't listened to my inner child meditation, it's absolutely free. It's one of the most powerful meditations I've ever made. You can go to aarondowdy.com slash child because it's inner child meditation or click the link in the top of the description box below. And then also, if you want to learn more about the cure to the abandonment wound that will change everything, watch this video right here. The side effects of the abandonment wound is that we will do anything we can to gain the approval and the validation of other people. And it's because we're not drawing that validation from self because as a kid, we weren't given that or we weren't taught that. So this video, I just wanted to show you what really helped me to heal my own abandonment wound.